how to use the uh, flash on your Sony a6000. What is good YouTube, it's that one camera guy back at it again with another video for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the pop-up flash on your Sony a6000 to get better photos. All right, the first thing I want to let you know before we actually get started that this is a beginner's tutorial guide on how to use the pop-up flash on your camera. Now I will be covering the very basics of how to use the flash but I'm also going to be covering the manual controls on how I control the camera completely to get the look that I want. Now the subject that I have here is posted on this side here. It's Link. He's kind of set up up here kind of in the, in the room to make it easier for me to take a photo of him in this example. And I'm going to go through a couple scenarios. We'll have a scenario with plenty of light, a scenario with very little light, and I'll show you how I use and take advantage of the flash. Now I highly recommend that you watch the other two videos that I posted about the Sony a6000. I actually covered the full manual controls, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And I also go over how to use your 16 to 50 kit lens, which we're going to use in this video. So let's go ahead and get started on the tutorial. Okay. So right now what we're going to do is imagine a situation. I love, I love focusing on situations when it comes to taking photos especially in these kind of environments. So imagine you're in a room. Now, by the way, this room is fairly well lit uh, for the sake of the video, but imagine you were at a party and you're indoors at a birthday party and you wanted to get some really good photos with your 16 to 50 kit lens. Now, let me show you sort of what I go through in my mind when I take a photo like this. Now, first of all, we need to set our camera to manual mode. So to do that, just go ahead and move your mode dial to the letter M. And by the way, this configuration that I'm doing right now was already talked about in one of my previous videos, which again, I highly recommend that you watch. So let me go ahead and get this set up. The first thing we're going to do is go through the list that I always cover. Number one, determine your focal length. So let me go ahead and position link up here. For this scenario that I'm taking a picture for, I'm going to go ahead and set up my, sh my focal length to about 35 millimeters. That seems like a good focus range. Maybe there's two people, maybe maybe three people, and 35 millimeters doesn't seem like a bad spot to start with. So I'm gonna do focal length first, and then I'm gonna determine my aperture. Now, typically with a lens like the 16 to 50 kit lens, I wanna use the lowest aperture value that I can get away with on my camera. So let me show you an example. If I, I scroll the back wheel, my lowest f-stop value is 5.6. Unfortunately, it doesn't go very low with this lens in particular. So that's what I'm gonna to have to work with in this photograph. The next thing I need to determine is my shutter speed. Now my shutter speed is typically one over the focal length. So for example, if the focal length is set to 35 millimeters, I'm gonna use one over 35. But the problem is there's no 35. So I'm gonna to go to 1 40th of a second. So let me go ahead and adjust my shutter speed to 1 40th. So there we go. And then finally, I adjust my ISO based on my brightness on the environment. So let me go ahead and set up my photo here. Adjust my ISO. There we go. Position it, take a photo, and there we have it. So there's our photo of Link. Let me jump to a full capture. So there it is. It looks pretty good. I have a lot of lighting in the room right now, and so it actually looks pretty good there for me. So what I wanna do now is incorporate the flash into this scene here now to improve the look of the photograph. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pop up the flash on my camera. So you know how to do this. There's a little flash symbol on the back of your camera. You just press it and it pops it open. Now what you might not know is that this flash has two positions. It has a forward facing position and you can also tilt it up. So we're gonna look at both methods today on how to do that. Now I'm gonna show you the quick way of just getting flash photos into your photograph. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna go in and set my mode dial, intelligent auto, I take that back. That's the green option on your mode dial. Now that's gonna make the camera do all the thinking for us. We're not gonna think one bit. Then I'm gonna press the flash exposure button and then let me jump into my full, uh, my shooting mode here. All right, so here we go. Here's our situation again. Here's our subject. I'm gonna zoom out to about 35 millimeters like I did before. And this time, if, as you can see in the example, the flash is facing towards Link. So I'm not gonna change any settings. We're in the intelligent auto mode. The camera's doing all the thinking for us, which is not bad actually. So here we go. It thinks we're actually doing a macro photo right now. Let's go ahead and take a picture. There we go. Direct flash, you saw that. There's our image. Now what you're gonna notice is that Link is a little bit overexposed. 
So um, this is the camera doing the thinking for us and what it thinks is the proper exposure. And then now what I want to do is go ahead and try a technique where I move this flash up towards the ceiling. So I'm going to, I'm going to focus this up. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to push this up like this and it's going to bounce the light up into the ceiling and bounce it right back down into the room. The idea is to make a big soft box with this entire ceiling. Now, if your ceiling is very high, it's going to have a hard time working, but if your ceilings are fairly low and they're white or a kind of a, a neutral color, this technique will work really well. Okay. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, here we go. So forward link back up a little bit here and let's take a look at the result. There we go. So let me jump to my full capture mode. There's our initial photograph of link. The lighting looks a lot nicer. It's more even. Uh, and then compare it to the previous photo with direct flash. So that's the difference. As you were looking at those examples, direct flash is really harsh, but if you bounce the light up into the ceiling, it's a lot easier. So that's how you use the pop-up flash in your intelligent auto mode. Now what we're going to be doing is taking a photo in this room. Now the lighting's changed a little bit. I turned off some lights. So I just have one ceiling light on right now in this room. And our goal is to take a photo of Link in the actual example using manual exposure controls. So it's going to be a little bit harder, but uh, we're going to see what we can do. All right. So let me jump to my other view. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out our proper settings. Usually I start with my uh, zoom value. So what my focal length is going to be. So we're going to go to 35 millimeters or so or close to it. So there's 35 millimeters. Then I'm going to use my aperture. I'm going to set it to the lowest it'll go, which is 5.6. And then I'm going to use the slowest shutter speed that I can get away with, which is 1 40th of a second. Now I covered a lot of these topics in my other manual exposure video. So none of this is brand new. So there we go. We're all set up. And the last thing I need to change is my ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and change and up, up my ISO. That looks good. 1600 position it, take a photo, play it back. There's our image. That doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad at all with the lighting that we're dealing with right now. We're going to try and enhance it now. So what we want to do now is go ahead and activate the flash in the back of our camera. So there we go. Flash is activated. We don't have good control over our live view effect now, but if I take a photograph right now, what's going to happen is it's going to be overexposed. So if I position it, take a photo right now with flash directly. So notice flashes directly. Play it back. You'll notice in the image that it's really overexposed. Now here's the thing. Two things are affecting our flash value. One is our flash exposure compensation value as well as our ISO. So what we need to do is drop our ISO or change our flash exposure compensation value inside the camera. We're going to first start with changing the ISO value of the camera first. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and drop my ISO to 100. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here to 35 position, take the photo. Play it back. And there we go. Notice how in the image it's overexposed. So the only thing we can change now is really our flash exposure compensation. To do that, we're going to click on menu and access our menu. We're going to go in and jump to camera settings and you'll notice that there's a setting called flash exposure compensation, uh, compensation things, and then drop our flash exposure compensation to minus three and then go ahead and take that same photo again. Let's position it. Zoom out a little bit. Okay. There we go. So this is direct flash and there we go. So our flash is a little more tame. It's a little darker, dark exposure. It's not overexposed like the previous image. Let me show you. There's a previous example. So we used flash exposure compensation to adjust for that. All right. Now what we're going to do is actually use the flash and point it up towards the actual subject this time and see how it looks. Okay. So we have roughly similar settings that we had before. I'm going to point it up and take a picture of Link. There we go. And notice that he's underexposed in the photograph. We need to make it a little bit brighter. So to do this, I would typically increase the flash exposure compensation, but unfortunately it's not enough power to illuminate the room. So what we're going to change is our ISO. So to my eyes, if I look at this right now, it looks like it's underexposed by about two stops, maybe two and two and one thirds of a stop. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my ISO 
One, two, three, that's one stop. One, two, three, that's two stops. And then one more, that's a third of a stop. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is just out of practice, the reason why I'm, I'm using that. Let's go ahead and take a picture. And let's take a look. So there we go. That photo looks a lot more properly exposed than it did before. It looks good. And that's it. That's how you get an exposed image for Link in this kind of situation. You're, you're probably thinking in your mind, how am I going to apply this in the real world? Well, what you would do is if you had human sized people in your photo, you would do the same thing. Set your focal length, your aperture, your shutter speed and your proper ISO. Position yourself, position the flash up, frame your photo correctly and take the photograph. Now, if the picture is dark, like we showed earlier, for example, let me play it back there. If the photo is underexposed like that, just increase your ISO a little bit more. That way you don't get the deer in the headlights. If you take the photograph directly towards the subject, it's going to be, it's not going to look as good. So the next thing we're going to do is look at a scenario where you have very little light. Okay, so the lights are off in the room. We have a little bit of lighting. Can you still use the pop-up flash on your camera to get a good photo? And the answer is yes. So right now to my eyes, it's not completely dark, but there's just a little bit of lighting. And again, we're still in an indoor environment. So let's go ahead and figure the situation out. All right, so here we go. Now we're in a scenario where it's really underexposed. Same steps, figure out your focal length, nothing changes. So maybe this is a night scene, you're taking a photo in the dark, right? In the city or whatever, maybe in a dark room. Set your aperture, your focal length first, then your aperture, which is 5.6, the minimum shutter speed, 140th, and then finally, we're gonna increase our ISO until we have an appropriate value. So I'm at the max ISO, 25,600. Let me frame my shot. There's no flash in this one yet. Let's take a picture and let's take a look. Okay, so there's my image. And as I can see it, it's extremely noisy. It's a very noisy image. You typically don't want to shoot at 25,600. Now what we're going to do is incorporate our flash. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to activate my flash and we already know if I take a picture right now with the ISO value at 25,600, it's going to be overexposed. So let me position it, take a picture and then take a look. There we go. Completely overexposed. So what I'm going to do is just by training, I'm going to go ahead and set my ISO to 100 and start there. So let's go ahead and drop our ISO to 100 and take a photograph. And there we go. We get a properly, somewhat properly exposed image of Link and it looks pretty good. The exposure on him is really good. Now you might be wondering, okay, if you don't have a ceiling above you and you're out in the open, this is really your only option. You have to use the direct flash on the camera in order to get a photo. There's nothing we can do about it. So you just have to face and point the camera, or sorry, point the flash directly at your subject. Pointing it up really won't make a difference for us because, well, there's nothing to bounce the light from, okay? But if we're indoors and there's something above us, we can bounce some of that light around to improve our light. So let's go ahead and position again. Point it up. I have it pointed up here. Take a picture. Let's take a look. So there's our image. We've seen this before. It's a bit underexposed, yeah? I'm looking at it, maybe two stops, or maybe two stops or so were underexposed. So what I'm gonna do is increase my ISO. One, two, three, that's one stop. One, two, three, that's two stops. All right, let's go ahead and take a picture again. Push it up. There we go. And there we have it. There's our photo. We're in a dark room, guys. I'm telling you right now, I know the camera makes it look like it's a lot of light in here. There just isn't, except the monitor lights that are hitting me right now. So if you take a look where we first started, let me go back. So here's our final image. Here, okay, this is where we started, 25,600. We were at 25,600 ISO. If you can see that, the image is very grainy and very, very noisy. And then from here, we moved on to flash, direct flash onto our subject, very bright, overexposed. And then we moved on and we decreased our ISO and we got a much pleasing image, but we could still improve. 
And then finally, I used the technique of bouncing my flash upwards and notice how it was still underexposed. So I compensated by increasing my ISO by two stops. And this is our final image. Now, you might be wondering, it still looks a little dark in the background. Now, this is an advanced topic that we're not really gonna dive into too much, but if you wanted the background image or the background of your subject to be a little bit brighter, so if we take a look, it's a little dark, we can drop our shutter speed. The shutter speed controls the ambient light of our room. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my shutter speed down by quite a bit. All right, so I'm gonna drop it to 1 8th of a second. I know you're thinking I'm crazy. That's really low, but I do have stabilization on the lens and I think I can pull it off. So let's see here. All right, I was doing, I was doing my best to hold it steady. Let's take a look. There we go. Let's see if there was any difference. I don't notice a difference. So in this case, dropping our shutter speed didn't make a difference. Let me try it again. Let me drop it a little lower and try it again. There we go. So I don't know what's going on. It's kind of weird, but um, you gotta really drop your shutter speed to get any type of effect. But if we take a look, this is at one fourth of a second. Let me get a close up. That's at one fourth of a second. Notice how Link wasn't moving, was still subject. At one fourth of a second, I was actually able to get a clean photo of Link. And the background is brighter. Let's jump back to another photo here. So here was before, okay? So here was the photo before at 1 40th of a second. And then here's the photo after I dropped the shutter speed a little bit more, it got a little bit brighter, got a little bit more light into the room and it looks a little bit more pleasing. Well guys, that is it. That's how you use the pop-up flash on your Sony a6000. Now there's more topics about lighting and there's other ways to get more light into your photos that I haven't talked about. You can actually use external flashes like this and they come in a variety of sizes. If you're interested in seeing that stuff, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me use some external flashes and do the same scenario and setup. If you have any questions or comments about the stuff I covered today, leave a comment in the comments section below and I'll try and address them for you. Or if you have any ideas for any other video concepts you'd like me to cover with the A6000, leave them in the comments section below. If you got a lot of value from this video, consider supporting my work by using the Amazon link that I have in the description below. By using that link and buying something today, I get a little kickback. It won't cost you a single dime, but I, it helps support the work that I'm currently doing. If you wanna help me even more, there's a PayPal donation link in the description as well if you wanna support me that way. Don't forget to like the video, drop a comment. Those things always help me out. Subscribe if you haven't done so and click on the screen if you wanna catch another video. And with that said, I'm your host, that one camera guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.